Flosstube, it's Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. I'm back for an update video. Today is Tuesday, December 29th. I'm struggling with recording this video. I recorded it yesterday and my program shut down and I just recorded it again and my program shut down. So I'm not sure what I do wrong, but I'm getting a little frustrated. But I'm going to try it again. I'm going to take it in sections and save it in sections and hopefully that will make a difference. But I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. I had a very good holiday. My husband and my sons were very sweet to me and gave me lots of wonderful presents. We had wonderful food and it was just a great restful holiday. I really, really enjoyed it this year. Um, let's see, what do I have to share? I've got, I'm in the, you know, this time of year is the my favorite time of the year because I get to start planning. I get to buy new planners. I get to update old planners. It's my thing. I love lists. And so each year I try to add another kind of, um, I don't want to say tasks, but just things that I know that I've struggled with in the past year, trying to schedule it or come up with a way that I um, become, it becomes a pattern because if it's a pattern or a habit, I'm most likely to do it. So. One of the things that I want to do better this year is to clean my house and to keep a wreath on the front door so that it is inviting and beautiful. So I have come up with a cleaning schedule, which is working out very well. Like this morning, I got up and cleaned all the bathrooms in the house before I ate breakfast. And you know, that was easy and it's done and I have time to do other things. Yesterday, I got up and cleaned my entire kitchen. We've been keeping the kitchen very clean, so that wasn't too bad. But I was able to scrub the front of all the appliances and dust and do all the things that needs to be done. With the wreath, I've decided that the last Sunday of each month, I'm going to make a wreath that's appropriate for the next month's kind of theme. So this Sunday, my sister Sharon and my younger sister Bridget came over and I made wreaths for my door front door and my sister Sharon's front door. She just moved into her new house this um, past November, and so she needs some wreaths to hang on her front door. So I just put in a picture of the wreath that I made for my front door, and Sharon's looks very similar, and it's just materials from around our farm. So um, pine tree uh, limbs and I cut some cedar, I cut some hydrangea blooms from dried hydrangea blooms, and then I found this vine also, and I just spray painted everything with this dark silver color, and then put it on a grape wreath vine with a ribbon. So I need to work on my kind of um, wreath making skills, because it's a little cluttered, but I think it's pretty, and it looks pretty for, um, for January, so that made me very happy. Next, I wanna talk about some of the finishes that I've had since my last video. I only have two finishes. Um, both of them are gen uh, a monthly uh, series that I'm working on. First, I'm working on the um, mini samplers, the monthly mini samplers from From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And I'm using the hashtag a monthly mini sampler style on Instagram to post my progress. And so I finished December so cute and I used the called for floss except the red I used the um, some floss that I'm receiving now through a monthly subscription from um, Forbidden Fibers so the, I love her floss it's very pretty the color saturation is very similar to what you get with weak style works but the floss is plump so you know with weak style works it's very thin floss but this is the same color saturation but thicker floss and I like that my other finish is the January monthly sampler. This is a new series that Country Cottage Needleworks has started. The February one has been released and I should have it in my Etsy shop, hopefully by the end of the week. It may be the first of next week, depending on Hoffman's schedule, but that is beautiful. So I love these. I really like Country Cottage Needleworks. Okay. The other finish that I have is not cross stitching. It's the crochet blanket I was working on for my son's um, girlfriend. I did finish that and I will post a picture here. 
That is based on the Attic 24 Woodland Crocheted Blanket. It is not the same yarns that she used, but it is a color match. And I used the, someone asked about the yarn, and I used the Impeccable yarn from Michaels. And I just went through, I had the picture of the colors that she had on her blog, and I was at Michael's and tried to match it as closely as possible. There are 15 different colors, and I will just list them. I think I have all of them here, but I'll just list them in the description box if you're interested in that. Um, currently, I am working on a couple of whips, which will show up in my whip parade at the end of the video. Um, but I am crocheting another blanket. So I had mentioned that I was knitting a blanket. Well, I broke the cord between my needles on that and I was very frustrated. So my Bridget, my younger sister, unwound the whole thing and then I started a different um, blanket that was on the band on the yarns that I'm using and it's called a Lark's Foot Crocheted Blanket and I'm almost finished with it. So my older son Patrick has claimed this one and I have enough yarn actually to do another one that I'm gonna make for my nephew because he was just, he's like, that looks like marshmallows. So it's really pretty, really fast. So I, Saturday before Christmas is when I broke the cord between the needles. And then I started that Sunday crocheting this blanket. So what is that? Sunday, it's been a week and two days and I'm almost finished, so very fast. I'll be so happy to get those because that's two big bags of yarn that will be out of my house. In my last video, I had a couple of questions that I want to answer and both of them had to do with things behind me. So the first one has to do with this cabinet. So when he asked, what is that? That is a wine cabinet um, and it is a big wine cabinet. And I will insert a picture of what it looks like on the inside here. So the inspiration for, for this cabinet was a, um, I was at the Silver Needle Retreat in 2013. Um, that's the year we built this house. And we were at the cafe or the little restaurant that's across the parking lot from Silver Needle. And they have this cabinet in there and it's about five feet by three feet and it has wine bottles in it. I'm like, that's really pretty. I wonder if the trim guy that's working on my house can build something similar to that. So I took a picture of it and I brought it back and I'm like, hey, Stubb, who that's the guy that does the trim work in our house or did the trim work in our house. Can you build this? And he's like, yeah, I can build that. He's like, but it's got to be bigger for this room. This room is not big, but I have high ceilings. He's like, it'll be eight feet tall. I'm like, I don't think I need that big. And he's like, yeah, you'll, it'll be great. So he built it. I love it. Um, and like I said, I showed a picture of that. We try to keep it stocked. My husband's like, we need more wine. He doesn't like to have empty slots in there, but it is very beautiful. Um, one of my favorite pieces. So if you're building a house in South Mississippi, Jeremy Williamson is the best builder ever, and he has Stubb, which is Daniel Lucas that does all the trim work with him, who is amazing. Highly recommend both of them. Wonderful guys. The other question was about this little table runner. So this little table runner came from this book, Back to Charm School. So I bought a charm pack at Patches and Stitches, and I bought this book there as well. Those are the authors. And this is hilarious because it is like lessons you would learn at charm school. That's how they name each of the different patterns. Like order coffee every 60 minutes in a coffee shop. Do not put your elbows on the table. Those are the types of things. The one that I made is called identify yourself to the person who answers the phone. <laughs> so appropriate, but it was really cute. I hand, it's all hand done. So it was hand stitched and hand quilted. So that's why it's a small piece. So, so that's the answer to that question. What the charm pack is, I don't remember. I'm sorry about that. I also want to share some Christmas cards I have received from floss tubers since the last of my last video. I received a sweet card from Stacy, 911 Stitcher. 
very positive, very sweet person. She is such a great person. Thank you, Stacy. I really enjoyed that. I also received um, this beautiful postcard from Daylene. So grateful. This has been hanging on my refrigerator because I love the colors and I love the artwork. So thank you very much. That was very sweet. And then I also received a Christmas card from Pam and Steph. Just keep stitching. Thank you so much for thinking about me. I really appreciate that. Okay, before I get to my whip parade, I also want to talk about my planning. So I am a planner, planner, planner. I love planning things. This is my favorite time of the year to start planning things. And so three things that I've started new planning for 2021 is I've got the a new planner for my cross stitching and I'm going to show you that in just a second. I've got a new cleaning schedule because that's one thing people say all the time. You get so much done with your cross stitch because I don't clean my house enough. If I spent more time cleaning my house, I wouldn't have so many cross stitch finishes. But I've come up with a plan of cleaning my house, which will only take about an hour, an hour and a half per day away from my cross stitching. So, um, you know, I have a weekly cleaning schedule and that cleaning uh, will do, I'll do that first thing in the morning. So like yesterday, I got up and cleaned my kitchen, scrubbed it, did everything I'm supposed to do for the week and it looks wonderful. This morning I got up and cleaned bathrooms before, um, the day was over and it only takes me about an hour to do each of those tasks so it'll keep my house tidy that's the plan um, the other thing that i want to be better with this next year is meal planning because i get frustrated asking people what do you want for dinner and they don't really have an idea so i'm going to do a month in advance meal planning so i've already sat down and made out my meal plan for the entire month and when i say meal it's just dinner um, for the entire month of January and now I can go through and make sure I've got all of the groceries ready One thing that we I started this past month is if I cook a new recipe and we are like this is delicious. I used our Alexa she'll hear me Alexa in um, I just list the ingredients in our shopping list And so I will be able to purchase those the next time I go to the grocery store and I've got that ready to go that was, I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. I should have done that years ago. And then the last planning is the cross stitch planning. So last year I used the 24 hours of cross stitch planner for about three months and then quit using it. And I think the reason why is that I printed it and used it in a three ring binder and that was too cluttery. It took up a lot of space in my stitching area and it was just something that kind of moved to my craft room and never came back downstairs. And so this year, Jen from Quirks and Stitches has developed a 2021 planner that is bigger and better than the 2020 planner. And so I've purchased the digital and the printable because I need them both. And I printed out and organized and made extra copies of certain pages of the printable one um, one Sunday morning. And then I took it to, um, Saturday morning, excuse me, and I took it to Kinko's and had it spirally bound, and I love it. It cost me less than five dollars for the binding of this, just so you know. So it's printed on 45 pound project paper. I got it at the office um, depot, and then it's all organized. So she's got, you know, the 24 hours of cross stitch year long ABC challenge. I printed it double page, and then, you know, all of your year-long ideas, whips that you start in 20, your finishes for, 20, excuse me, 2021, your finishes for 2021. And then she's got it set up for monthly challenges and plans. And then she's got um, the marathon pages. So we, there's going to be four marathons this year, and she's got pages and planning pages for each of those, or for those, and I printed them four times. And then she's got additional pages for project sheets for each of your projects and your ultimate whip list at the end. So just love this very much. The digital is really cool because it's linked in GoodNotes and you can skip around in your planner that way. Love that. But I also like to write things down. So that is, oh, I'm so excited about my planner for cross stitching. So thank you, Jen, um, Quirks and Stitches for that. And I'll link the um, Etsy, her Etsy shop below if you want to look at those. 
Okay, so before I get to the whip parade, I want to announce the winners for my giveaways for my last video and also tell you what the giveaway is for this video. So last video, I had two different items up for giveaway. One was the Joy to the World chart from From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And she sent these to me as extras. And the other is the Eleanor Rigby chart that I got for my shop, but it had a bend in it, so I couldn't sell them in my shop. So there were five copies of this giveaway for the giveaway, and the winners for those is Sandy Walker, Debbie Shilin, Janet Dodd, Donna Coffey, and Debbie Horton. So I have your names listed here. My email is at the bottom, and you can just email me and send me your address, and I'll get that mailed out to you. And then Joy to the World chart, the winners were Debbie Pratt and Barb Gunther. So again, if you'll just email me, I'll get in your address and I'll get these sent out to you. Um, this week's giveaway or this video's giveaway are two charts that are, again, from my shop that have issues. So the first one is the rarest flower. And the issue is, I don't know if you can see it, there's a line that runs down the middle of this chart. So it's like a scratch or a printing error or something. But otherwise the chart's fine. So if you're interested in this, I only have one copy, just mention garden in your comment. And the second one, I have one copy of Winter Snow by Country Cottage Needleworks and the issue is that it got bent in the box. See the bend right there? So if you're interested in this chart, just say winter. Okay, and um, if I, I'm sure most of the people that won the last one, I recognize your name, so you're, you watch my videos often, but if I don't hear from individuals by the next recording, I'll redraw those. Okay, now it's time for my whip parade. So these are whips that have been in my whip pile for some time, most of them for some time, and they will be carried into 2021. I do not plan to have all 35 of these finished by the end of the year, but I would like to reduce my existing whip number by half. We will see if that ever happens because I have lots of planned starts for 2021. And, um, I would just like to get some of these a more progress. You can tell as we go through these, these are the ones that were least interesting to me. I started 2020 with 81 whips and I finished with 36. Now I started a lot during 2020 as well because I had 71 finishes. So obviously I've added to my whip pile as I was finishing projects as well. So, but I started with 81, I'm finishing with 36. I think that's pretty good. We'll see how I do over the course of 2021. Um, as I show each one of these, I will tell you the information that I do know. I'll tell you when I started it because, you know, I need to be shamed on some of these. Um, I'll tell you the fabric that I used. And in most cases, I'm using the call for flosses. Um, if I don't have the call for flosses, I substitute from my stash, whether that is um, Victorian Motto or Limited Edition General Arts. I have lots of those. So just know that I'm using the call for or something very similar. Okay, so we're going to start. And I have these alphabetized in my whip. I use the X Stitch app too because, you know, you can never be too organized. So I'm just going through these somewhat um, alphabetically. So my first whip, whip number one, is 12 Days of Christmas by Satsuma Street. I started this on November 7th, 2016 during my crazy 100 days of new starts. And I am stitching it on a piece of 40 count Silk Weaver blush using the Call for DMC. So I've got six of the blocks done and almost all of the top border. So my plan is to use this as the year of whips challenge. I know that you have to have something that has 12 parts and you can use it if you have half done. So you have to do at least six. So this would be perfect. And if I do that and meet that goal, I will have this finished by the end of the year. I'm kind of 
penciling it in as um, one block completed every other month. They're not hard to do. And I don't, again, I don't know why I don't have some of these finished because I enjoy stitching them. Obviously, I don't enjoy them as much as stitching other things. Whip number two is another 12 Days of Christmas. It is the 12 Days of Christmas from Jim Shore. I started this in December of 2016 and I started the first 11 blocks, but I'm not stitching them as a complete part. I'm stitching them individually on perforated paper, kind of like this, but with the perforated paper. And I'm using the Flourish per 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 perforated paper that you can get from Mill Hill or Witch Elk. I got mine from Silver Needle actually. And this is the one I have most progress on. So I'm only gonna show you a couple because most of them is just the border. So that's the first block. And you can see on the second block, I did not get very far. So, I mean 10, here's a good example. This is what most of them look like after the first and second. Is that. So, my plan is to work on these over the course of the year. I do not want to set up a goal that I'm gonna finish any of it by the end of the year, but I would love to have these done and framed individually and put around this dining room area, but you know, big plans, we'll see. Whip number three is Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. I started this in May of 2018 as part of my Mania starts and as part of a stitch along with Teresa. I have not gotten very far, though she has finished her Hawk Run Hollow piece. I am struggling with this, and I've actually got it as part of my January goals is to finish the first block. So that's my progress. And I think I just need to set a goal to stitch on this for more than one day, and I'll get past kind of the frustrating part. Um, but right now, my goal is to finish the January, in January, finish block number one. And we'll go from there if we meet that goal. Whip number four is Berry Collector by Nora Corbett. She is so pretty. I love those colors. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Silk Weaver. I think it's a solo because I have a lot of Silk Weaver in my stash. But this is the progress that I have. So actually most of the stitching is done. Her, you know, the face and the legs are not gonna take that much and then there's lots of beads. You need to see that better, okay. Whip number five is Calico Sampler by Summerhouse Stitchworks. I picked this up at the Primitive uh, Prim Stitchers Retreat when it was held in Marietta, Georgia. And I started this on in November of 2016. I'm stitching it on a piece of 30 count straw. I actually bought this from um, Beth at the retreat and that is my progress. I like stitching on it. I just, you know, I've liked stitching on other things more. So maybe I should set a goal to finish through, I don't know, A, B, C, D, E, F this year. We'll see. Whip number six is Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street Samplers. I do want to finish this one this year. That's, I need to put that on my, one of my yearly goals. And this is my progress so far. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count Sandpiper, which is a birds of a feather um, fabric that's no longer available. But I love the colors, I love this chart. So that one needs to be added to my 2021, hopefully finish. Whip number seven is Croaking Toad Manor by Praiseworthy Stitches. I picked this up at the 2013 Silver Needle Retreat. My sister talked me into this because she wanted it. And she's like, will you get one? I said, sure. And we were going to stitch them together. I started this in November of 2016. She has yet to start hers. But I haven't made very much progress. So it's stitched on a piece of 32 count Mirage from Picture This Plus. And that's my progress. I'm struggling with that tree because once I stop and then start again, I have to take a lot of time to find where I am. So I probably should move to a different part 
and maybe I can get more progress. Whip number eight is Grateful, Thankful, Blessed by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And I do want to finish this one this year. I was hoping to finish it last year, but I did not. This is stitched on a piece of 36 count beige from Weeks Dye Works using the Call For or Victoria Motto substitution. And I'm almost halfway done. I just love the colors of this. So beautiful piece. Whip number nine is Hallow Day In by Brenda Gervais. I do not have it with me because I'm having to restart that. I messed something up and um, it's not in my whip box, so it will be added to the list of whips, but it is not here now. Whip number nine is Halloween at Hollyberry Farm by Stacy Nash Primitives, and I love this one. I'm not sure why I have not stitched on this more, other than probably because I've been stitching on other things. But it's on a piece of 36 count cedar plank by Lakeside Linen. And the color is going to be gorgeous. Just need to get to work on it. I'm using the call for threads on this, the two colors that I've stitched. Halloween at Hollyberry Farm was started in February of 2017. And whip number 10 is Stacy Nash Primitives, Houses of Berry Chapel Road, Miss Baxter's House. I started this in May of 2017, and I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count lamb's wool, and the colors are beautiful. Whip number 12 is Jolly Happy Soul from Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread, and my plan was to finish this in December, but I wrote it in my planner. So now I can't lie, and I have to wait and finish it in 2021. So I'm almost finished with it. I have to do two of the cardinals, one on the hat and one on the candy cane, and then just these um, snowflakes through here. So I'm, maybe I can finish this on January 2nd, maybe, and then I can get it and display it in my living room. So we'll see. Whip number 13 is Nora Corbett, Mari, or Mary. My sister-in-law's name is Mari, and she spells it this way, so I call it Mari. I started Mari on November 24th, 2016. It's on a piece of silk weaver that I don't know. It's 32 count. And I'm using the call for DMC. So very pretty colors. Whip number 14 is Minerva from Nora Corbett. This is my favorite of the, the Bewitching Pixies and you'll be able to see that when I show you my progress. <laughs> I'm stitching her on a piece of 32 count gingerbread from Picture This Plus, and that is my progress. She is beautiful. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to stitch the trellis and the owl. I might not I have to decide, but she is beautiful, and I do want to finish Minerva this year. Whip number 15 is October from the Cricut Collection, or Cross-Eyed Cross Cricut. I started this on May 25th, 2019 as a part of my Mania Starts and a stitch along with Lisha from the um, Southern Ladybug. And that is my progress. This is stitched on a piece of 32 count Anubis from Under the Sea Fabrics. And it's gonna be beautiful. Right now that O is hard to see, but I think once I get it, you know, a little bit more stitching done, it will be better. And I may go back and um, back stitch around the letters. That probably will be what I do. Whip number 16 is Pattern Pretties number four by Jeanette Douglas. I ordered all of these for my shop and I just think they're beautiful. They're now in the clearance bin if you're interested. You get the pattern and you get the floss for each of these or for each one you order. But I started this in May of 2020. So this is one of my er, um, earliest or one of my latest, I should say, mania stars. And that's my progress. This is a piece of 32 count something or maybe 36 count. I'm not sure. But it's very pretty. It will make a gorgeous pin cushion. Whip number 17 is Playing with Jacks from the Cricut Collection or Cross-Eyed Cricut. I started this on May 25th, 2019 as part of Mania, and it was a stitch along with Lisha as well from the Southern Ladybug. And then this past October, 
EJ showed it as one of hers, uh, one of the projects she wanted to work on. So I contacted her and we were going to work on this together as well. My plan was to stitch on it when I watched the Sunshine Stitchers videos and that worked. I got a lot done and then I fell behind in watching their videos and stitching on this. But this is my progress. You can see that I have one and a half gourds left to do because I'm not going to do the bottom part. I'm just going to do the little border around the top. So I'm close to a finish on this one. So that one will be a, I need to finish it in 2021 goal. I could watch, what I do is I stitch on it when I'm watching Sunshine Stitchers and all three of them have posted um, their whip parades. So I should watch their whip parades and stitch on it and maybe finish it because they've got a lot of whips too. Whip number 18 is Pumpkin Brew by With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. I started this on October 15th, 2019. That was one year that I was going to do Halloween starts during October. And that is my progress. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count hand dyed fabrics. And I never pronounce this right, so I'll just show you the name. So that's pretty. Whip number 19 is the Pumpkin King Nutcracker from Satsuma Street. This was started in May of 2020 as part of my Mania Starts. It's on perforated paper and I have just a little bit done. So that's his right arm and then the portion of his coat. So that's cute. I love Satsuma Street stuff. Whip number 20 is the Royal Holiday from Mirabilia. I started this on December 14th, 2016. I'm stitching it on a piece of Lakeside Linens, but I'm not sure what this is. It's 32 count, but that's all I know. And that is my progress. It's gonna be beautiful on this dark green. Whip number 21 is Salem Remembered by the Primitive Needle. I started this on December 19th, 2018. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count rusty nail, which is a fabric that Teresa Kitten Stitcher dyed. And it's beautiful fabric, but that's as far as I've gotten. Whip number 22 is Sampler of the Season Summer by With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. I have stitched the other three of these. I need to finish this one. This was started on December 4th, 2016. I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count light exemplar from Lakeside Linens, and that is all I've done. I have two of them hanging up in my living room. The other one I have the frame, I just have to frame it, and then I need to finish this one. Whip number 23 is Praiseworthy Stitches, Simple Gifts Christmas. I started this on, in November of 2016, and I've actually been stitching on this this past week. I have a, almost half of it done. This is stitched on a piece of 40 count, um, I think this is sheep straw from R&R. &R. It is beautiful though. Whip number 24 is Spirit of Oz Santa by Brooks Books, and this is one that I want to finish before May. I started this in um, May of 2016. It was one of, during my first mania and I have worked on it and I have not finished it. And you can see there's lots of little parts to it. And I think I have finished everything but the large Santa part. So, you know, I have the little witch and I have the hot air balloon and all the other little characters done. So cute, the hat. That and that and there. So I just need to work on the Santa and his little badge. So he is on my list of plans for January. And yes, Jenny, I'm going to stitch on him every month until I finish him. I want to finish him. Whip number 25 
is my oldest whip. I started this in 2015, February 15th of 2015. And it is a series from the Just Cross Stitch magazine from 2010. It's Splendor of Florals by Sharon Pope. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count antique white linen using DMC and the um, Karen Water Lilies for the border. I have stitched two of the blocks May and June and started on September. So let me fold this because it's a big one. But that's my progress. So that's May and June. And you can see September is the morning glory at the bottom. I have no plans to work, you know, to try to finish this this year, but I would like to get more than two blocks done. So, number 26 is Spooky Halloween by Bright Needle. I started this on October 27, 2018. And I have this much done. So the chart came with the old willow flosses, which are a lot lighter than what it looks like on the chart. And this is a piece of 32 count linen that I dyed for the Hey Chicky pattern that I did years ago in my Etsy shop. I have a few of those kits left, but. Whip number 27 is a um, Brenda Gervais piece. I started in May of 2019. It is spring in Baltimore, and I just love this. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count. I think this is probably creme brulee. It's something from R&R, &R, but it is beautiful. Whip number 28 is Stars and Diamonds by Heartstring Samplery. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count Old Town Blend from R&R, &R, and that is my progress. I started it, did I say that? January 9th, 2018, so almost three years ago. Whip number 29 is Strawberry Stitches by Jeanette Douglas. And if you've watched my video, you know I love doing these types of projects from Jeanette Douglas. I've stitched almost all of her stitches series. And this is on a piece of 32 count Lugana from Silk Weaver, but I don't know the color. And I started this March, excuse me, March, October 15th, 2016. So I have the over one strawberries done, so I need to get to work on this. I might put this as a finish for 2021 because I do love these stitches. Whip number 30, is that right? Is Summer at Hollyberry Farm by Stacy Nash. So pretty, and that border is probably my favorite border of all of the Holly Berry series, which is saying a lot because her borders are great. And I'm stitching this on, I think this is a piece of 36 count or 40 count Winter's Brew, I believe. Isn't that beautiful? The colors are wonderful. Whip number 31 is not cross stitch, but it is a needlework type thing. This is Sweet Harmony by Teresa Lehman. It's a knot work piece. So you do colonial knots and French knots, and there's three parts to it. And I have done some of it. Do I have those parts in here? Apparently not, but I wanna finish the scissor keep. So I have done the scissor fob and the little book part. I just need to finish this part. So I put it in here because I want to finish this. I want to get this done this year. And whip number 30 is a mania start from 2020. It is Little Witch by Shepherd's Bush. This came as a kit. So it's stitched on a piece of, I think it's 32 count um, vintage country mocha. And that's my progress. I've had to restart this over and over again. I've struggled with the counting apparently. Whip number 33 is Turkey Dressing by Raise the Roof. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count lamb's wool. 
And that's my progress. Oh, that's bad. So not very much. And this may become a, a give up because I'm not enjoying stitching it. I don't like the fabric. So we'll try this year and see how I fare. Let me fix that here. Okay, three more. Let's see. Whip number 34 is a stitch along that I signed up for. Um, and it's a PDF chart. It is Under the Sea by Doreen Jones. And I have finished three parts, I think. Two parts, maybe. And I need to keep working on this. This is a piece of 40 count um, fabric that I think is a uh, silk weaver. It's either silk weaver or hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie. But we'll see. Whip number 35. I started this in April of 2017 and that's Vintage X by the Prairie Schooler. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count black Lugana and I have done that much of the rooster. He's so handsome. And my very last whip for to carry over into 2021 is a Jeanette Douglas piece. It came in four parts. I'm working on the winter part. If I can find the cover, I'll show it to you. It's Winter by the Sea. I've completed the August and now I'm working on the winter. This is a piece of 30, a 40 count, I think it's like sand castle. It's something sand from um, Silk Weaver. And that's my progress. So you can see the upper corner is done. That's the autumn piece and I'm working on the winter piece. So pretty. Okay, so that is my list of whips. Lot, it's a lot shorter than it was a year ago, so that makes me happy. 36 whips, and hopefully I can get some of these done. You can tell that these are my kind of the least favorites from those things that I've started in the past. Um, I just, some of them may not even make it to completion. Like that turkey dressing, I think I'm going to just give up on that. And there may be a couple of other ones like that. We'll see. Um, that's what I'm doing in 2021. I am not going to continue stitching on things that I'm not enjoying. I'm really bad about that. I will read a book till the end, even if I'm not enjoying it, because I have this obsessive need to finish things. So um, I'm going to really rethink those things. And what I probably should do is, barring the things like the... 12 Days of Christmas from Mill Hill, because that's a big project, and the um, sp uh, floral, Splendors of Floral, because that's a big project. Just say, if I don't have something, a lot of progress done on these by the end of this 2021, that I should just give up on those. Maybe that's what I'll do. Now that I've got a record of where I was before 2021, this time next year, I can kind of assess and say, you've stitched nothing on this. Get rid of it. So that's I think that's what I'm going to do. That's so freeing. So, okay. Well, thank you for staying with me through all of this. This has been a longer video for me than I've recorded in quite a while. Um, I have um, a finished parade scheduled. Hopefully I can get to that in the next week and get that posted as well. I hope you have a great New Year's Eve. Enjoy yourself. Have fun and be safe and enjoy the first of the year. I'm gonna fix a big dinner. It's, we live in the South, so you have to have your you know, black-eyed peas and cabbage and things like that. So that's what I'm gonna do for New Year's Day. Um, I will see you soon and Happy New Year.